Hi, I'm Kim McIntosh and I teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School. And in this presentation, we're going to talk about a different type of cell division called meiosis. And meiosis is the process that creates the gametes. It creates the sperm or the egg cell so that sexual reproduction can occur. So let's talk about those gametes. The gametes are either the egg cell or the sperm cell. So you'll see here that here's an egg cell and these are the sperm cells and they have to be created in a kind of a different way than, um, than all the other types of cells in the body. So we have a couple of different words for these. Instead of saying sperm and egg cells all the time, we'll say gametes or we might say germ cells because germ cell is another word that just encompasses the sperm and the egg cell. Now, a really important aspect of these is that they each have 23 chromosomes. So an egg cell, it has 23 chromosomes inside of it. And a sperm cell has 23 chromosomes inside of it. This is considered haploid, and sometimes we indicate this with one N. That means it has one set of chromosomes. And I'm using 23 because I'm speaking about human egg and sperm cells, not every organism has 23 chromosomes in their gametes. All right, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about all the other types of cells. All right, somatic cells, that really just means any cell in the body that is not a gamete. Okay, so it could be a nerve cell, it could be a blood cell, it could be um, a heart cell, any cell that is not a gamete is considered a somatic cell. And they have 46 chromosomes. So all cells except the gametes have 46 chromosomes and that's considered diploid. And we indicate that with a two in, all right? That means that it has two sets of chromosomes. Well, where do those two sets of chromosomes come from? one set from the sperm and one set from the egg. And this actually works out pretty well for the cells because when a sperm cell fertilizes an egg cell, then those chromosomes, they pair up, that's a complement, and we end up with 46 chromosomes. Well, if we had sperm and egg cells that started with 46 chromosomes, let's say they each started with 46 chromosomes and they combined, then that wouldn't work out very well because then all of the cells in that body would have 92 chromosomes and cells aren't too happy when there's too many chromosomes. And then if it continued from there, 92 and 92, you can see that we would very quickly reach an exponential amount of chromosomes. So our bodies have a very unique way of dealing with this they have an, an entirely different process of cell division to ensure that the sperm cells only have 23 chromosomes and the egg cells have 23 chromosomes and that there is some different um, genetic variability in there. So let's take a closer look at how this happens. Well, somatic cells are produced with mitosis. So all somatic cells when they, there needs to be the growth of the organism or there needs to be repair, they go through mitosis. But the gametes, they go through a process called meiosis. In order to form gametes, we need this process of meiosis. All right, so meiosis actually has eight different stages. They're very similar to mitosis, but there's a few differences that we're gonna talk about. So the first one, the first phase is prophase one. Um, and this is not all that much different than prophase in um, mitosis, but the, uh, the chromosomes have paired up here. You can see them, they're pretty well defined. The nuclear envelope is breaking down, but something else is happening here. Something very important is happening here and it's called crossing over. And what that means is that small pieces of the sister chromatids are trading places, okay? So you have these, these chromatids, they're connected in the center by the centromere, okay? And 
a small piece of this might trade places with a piece of this side. And so they'll just swap, they'll trade places. Um, and then it can occur down here as well. It doesn't have to be on the ends, it could happen in here as well. But the amazing thing about this is that by swapping like that, it means that there's going to be genetic variability. So this is an extremely important part of meiosis. And remember that that happens in prophase one. Okay, all right, let's move on. We'll talk about metaphase one. The um, sister chromatids, they're lining up on the metaphase plate. So very similar. Anaphase one, they're being pulled to either side of the cell. But if you, um, if you take a closer look, you can see that they haven't been pulled apart, okay? So they're, they're still together right there. So that's a little different than mitosis because those sister chromatids, they haven't really been um, pulled apart yet. All right, when we move on to telophase one, we have the chromosomes on either side of the cell and we see that it's beginning to split. We start out prophase two. So that's down here, this, um, this fifth step is prophase two. Now, this is called meiosis two, this, this portion down here. And it is really similar to mitosis. Almost the same thing going on here. So in prophase two, there's no nuclear envelope. Um, the chromosomes are well defined and they're, they're just in the cell. This kind of starts out um, the process of meiosis two, moves on to metaphase two, where they line up on that imaginary plate in the center. Anaphase two, the sister chromatids have split apart and they've moved to either side of the cell. They're being pulled by those spindle fibers. And then telophase two or telophase two, at the very end, we have four unique daughter cells, okay? So these are unique, they are all different. So none of these are the same, they don't match each other and they don't match that original cell that they started with. So they have different genetics and that is an extremely important component of genetic variability in our world because this meiosis process produces four genetically different cells. These four cells, depending on whether this is a male or a female organism that's producing these cells, these four cells are either egg cells or if it is a male producing these, they would be sperm cells because those are the only types of cells that are produced in meiosis. Now, if we compare mitosis to meiosis, then we see um, some interesting things about this. Mitosis, we start off with a parent cell. In mitosis, this parent cell is 2N, okay? That means it's uh, diploid. The DNA replicates and produces two daughter cells, and those two daughter cells are identical to the parent cell. So if this parent cell that we started out with, if this is a lung cell, these two daughter cells are identical lung cells. Kind of makes sense. If we, if, we, uh, if we have a lung cell that is damaged or needs to be replaced, we would like to replace it with a couple of lung cells, right? All right, over here in this process of meiosis, we start out with this parent cell, and again, this is 2N, and the DNA replicates, we end up with two daughter cells, but then we have a further cell division, so we go from meiosis one, which produces these two, and then meiosis two, and we end up with four daughter cells, and those four daughter cells, they are different, so they have different genetics. These two daughter cells um, in mitosis are diploid. So just like the parent cell, these two are diploid. But in meiosis, those four daughter cells are haploid. So when with the, with the process of mitosis, you start with a 2N cell 
and you end up with two daughter cells that are two in. Then with meiosis, you start with um, a diploid parent cell, but the result, your four daughter cells are one in, so that the sperm has 23 chromosomes and the egg has 23 chromosomes. Later on, when the egg is fertilized by a sperm cell, the, they complement each other. They have 46 chromosomes, the perfect amount for, for a human cell.